Hey y'all, I'm the final anomaly and today I bring you an Endymion deck going up against the Master Duel meta. No, 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 stop, stop. We're not doing a Master Duel video. This would be a TCG video. It's a different. Oh, you're right. Wait, Shadow, is that you? Why do you sound so different? This is my TCG voice. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty y'all, so another TCG vid, believe it or not, there's been several comments asking for another TCG vid, and the last video, if you guys haven't seen that, I'll, I'll pin it in the comment section and post it in the description down below as well, but a lot of people are, we're still getting comments saying that without Electromite, this deck is, um, is no good, it's DOA, and that's just not the case y'all, this is actually from the TCG ban list event that they had on Master Duel, so anyway Shadow, Walk us through how you use non-electromite TCG version of Endymions. Well, right here, and one thing to remember is that I get a lot of comments saying draw Lockwood completely destroys this deck. And if you look at what we're doing right here, we basically summon out in the gate before he can even go for the draw. So, so right now we just made a round draw. At this point, you haven't done a search, and if he does, and if he has draw, you can just negate it. Exactly, whatever he does. Now we can just do our first search effect. And if he has Droll Lockwood, oh, Jacko King can negate. Mm -hmm. Like half the hands can play through Droll, and the other half is kind of rough. It's hand is specific, but not just Droll every game. Uh, we just gotta lose. We can still play around it. So here, look at this. Jacko King was a search, Endymion's another search here. None of these are lucky draws that we just drawn into a lucky um, negate. All of these things. Jackal King was one, and Demi is two, both searched by Mastery. Institution search is the other one. And now you might think we're going for Electrovite. No, we're not going for Electrovite. We're going for Crowley. Because we don't we haven't all used our normal summon yet. And because of this, we can even search Secrets, Blue Boy, Knowledge. Secrets of Blue Boy would be perfect, but then he's got we got the knowledge. Which is like, oh what happens if you get that? Also obviously Electromite's banned for the event, yo. <laughs> or was banned exactly. for the event. Yeah. So again, and this is TCG. You're seeing it in Master Duel, but it is the TCG mm -hmm. list with the yeah. exclusion Here's of maybe thing. one or two cards. Exactly. And if he had Droll and he was saving it for Jacko King off the field, we already did all of our searches. Like the knowledge in the hand, we don't even use. Um, if we got secrets in Blue Boar, which would be like the lucky thing, then we could go even further. But we were unlucky with Crowley, and look at our end board. We got five negates already without Electromite. He also has the ability if the opponent can somehow wipe the board. I, I didn't know this till later on in the videos that me and Shadow were making, but Celine's got this nice little effect where, where she's got some protection against being attacked. Something crazy as well, though, is that even if he has enough monsters on field to attack everyone, if he can attack a Debian, he gets a search. If he attacks Magister, Magister puts himself back in the scale, and then even if he's a spell effect, a scale, a pendulum, Celine still counts him because it's a Debian card on the field. So that means Magister still protects Celine, even if he's attacked over everything as well, because he cannot attack and get Magister off the field by battle, um, because Celine will still count it. Anyways, let's see who you are going up against here. Um, it was the most common deck to go against was actually Gold Pride. Defend. Oh, is, is this Gold Pride? It is, but we don't let them play. Of course Improves we don't it. let them play. All right. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking we need to use a Debian. We got one more monster in the gate, so we're doing that. And it's Gold Pride here, and he, I get the toggle like, you want to negate this? He's like, I'm not even going to let you negate this. I'm out of here. Alrighty, so another match, and it looks like Shadow also gets to go first on this one. Now that hand is looking, it's looking kind of good. That's actually a pretty good hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree with it. But look at all those draw spells. Surely Droll kills this hand too, right? Exactly. Let's take a look then. Yeah. You got the out to Droll here too? Do I have the out? Let's see here. I hope he doesn't have Droll because then I have to end my turn. Wait a second. I just use Servant Effect to summon out a Dracul King. Oh. And uh, now we do affected by Droll. Let me, let me go ahead and pause this, y'all. Take a look again. And we're only doing this because you can't believe the amount of comments that we get saying Droll, Droll, Droll. I even got to the point where I go to... The shadows live streams and joke joke around about joke exactly. around about it so y'all but again troll is definitely very effective but there is ways there's ways y'all mm -hmm. if he had jackal had hard drawn jackal though we could also summon jackal king from the deck so it's not just as if you get specifically servant and magister or servant and master um bestiary that's the only thing you can play around jackal also plays around it or if you have citadel institution 
um, as well. There's like three or the four other ways to play around it. Not just that, you failed to mention Called by the Grave as well. And don't forget, I can also Pendulum summon out the um, uh, Jackal Kings first before doing my searches so that I can negate the drill. Yeah. And uh, if any and DBU players out there saw how many counters were on Jackal King, I am so sorry. I just waited straight to 12 counters and it hurt me. Don't worry. <laughs> In this, we draw into Upstart Institution. I'm thinking, let's just keep on seeing what we draw here. And then there's the Jackal. But, but we've already done with seven, right? So he's a brick. Not true. First off, we use Institution here. Abductor's going to search out the Endemian, because it's seven counters. And then Institution can remove out another seven counters to get out um, another six counters to get Jackal King. That's why we did it in that order, because it's one less counter we keep on the field. Now, if he had Nibiru, we could still negate the Nibiru. Is that Pendulum Summon? Remember, oh, this is no Electromite. This is in a format where everyone says the demons are dead because there's no Electromite. And I'm thinking, do you not see what I'm doing over here? <laughs> now look at this. I can remove three counters, summon out the Jackal from the hand. Jackal can remove three counters, summon out Jackal King from the deck. And then we can Magister Effect, summon out Endemion. And we got six negates, but only six counters. Nope, Magister puts a counter on everything. Alrighty, so let's run through this really quick, y'all. Without Electromite again, had the out to draw. So what do we have? Three spell, uh, three three monster uh, negates, and then one spell and trap, and then two options. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one thing to know is that Magister and Celine they both summon, and you're like, oh, we have six monsters all maxed out. Magister and Celine they're not negates because you don't have any room. The way you're supposed to negate with this though is that Endymion negates by bouncing himself to the hand. Then Magister moves three counters to summon out Endymion from the deck. Endymion that you just summoned can negate by bouncing Magister to the hand, and now Selene has no more room to summon out. So even though Selene and Magister, they both require zones to be able to be the gates, this is just a way that you can just keep on using your zones and bouncing to the hand to make sure that you actually have enough room to summon all your negates still. All yeah, right. So, so even though it's one Endymion, it's three spell trap negates if he goes while a lot of spell trap cards. Okay. Because so Cosmic, go. I'm oh. like, I'm not going to get rid of that. He's going to use another one. I'm like, okay, sure. Was Cosmic Cyclone popular in the event? That's the second time I've seen it. Um, yeah, well, I think the thing is that you see a lot of the Gold Pride, which uses a lot of back row, so they probably was using that to get oh, rid of it. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. In terms, and he realizes <laughs> he can't target a Demian. He's going to use it on a Demian, negate it, but he can't. He realizes, oh, what would you like to target? It can't be a Demian. Then he Again, goes, you know, oh, I'm out of here. If you're new to the deck, uh, I've actually done it myself where I try to target a Demian and then it doesn't work, so... Alrighty, y'all. So now we're in the third match of the video. We have Shadow going second. Wait, no Electromite. That's GG's. Wait, Endymion's going second. What are we possibly going to do? And then look at this hand. <laughs> the hand is looking like, oh, what is that? I just noticed this hand. All That's right. what I do for you. Yeah, well, let's take a look and see how Shadow outs this. What is he going up against? Let's find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh no. It's Thank you so. Exactly. Thank you so. Was really popular. It's was still meta now. I see a lot of them at my vocals. But this deck actually tears through Baker Soul. Like I go against it, and I went against three Baker Soul users in one of my locals in one night, and I two owed all of them. Sounds about and right. I was like, okay. Sure. Sounds like Endymion. Did you just... uh -oh. his hand? The D Shifter. Uh -oh. Now you have to just pass your turn against D Shifter, right? D Shifter. Now, if you want to take it off, fast forward. Yeah. We saw. We put it on pause, okay? Here's the thing. Oh, actually, show what he reveals. Show what he reveals first. Oh yeah. What press play. You... Okay, hold on. I can skip through this. He's about to. All right, I'm gonna press play, and then we're gonna. Here's where we start recording again. Cause I'll... I can cut this okay. off. Okay. Here we go. Got it. Do I pause it right after two? Right after he reveals pause. Yeah. Yeah. Pause it right after. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's gonna reveal the raisin and ash blossom. Now pause it here. So he used D shifter. And there's no maxi, obviously. We don't have to worry about Drawn Lockwood, because Drawn Lockwood has to send him to the graveyard. And what we used to always do before is we used to just go, okay, upstart and upstart before we use the Zyros and Mastery to bait out the Ash Blossom. Now we get punished for that because he can just draw us after. But since he can't use Drawl and we know he's got Ash Blossom, now we can just go, hang on, we can just bait out it. And if he doesn't get baited out by the um by the upstarts, you know, so if it summons out in the gate anyway, and then Mastery and Desires can get us whatever we need to. If you want to play here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So now we can figure out, okay, first thing is, we know that trap card is Snow Dust Devil, which can destroy things. So we want to be able to draw until we can, he goes Ash Frost. I'm like, okay, uh, sure. I guess it's that easy to bait out. Glad I didn't start with Mastery. So we've got to try to get as many counters on the field so we can use Mastery to add Endymion and pop everything. So the first thing we do without using Upstart, we search for that Citadel here. Um, um, Cause I had pretty much a lot of confidence that we could draw what we need. And Upstart, if we do the Endymion, I think if we do this first. Oh. Uh huh. Three cards on the field. Three cards oh, for me. He's got to chain everything now. Astro Dust Devil doesn't work here. To destroy anything, it just destroys his own rock with the Vanquisher. So. Wait, wait, why is that? Well, so um, the trap card—that's the main, you know, interaction—is to destroy all monsters on the field. Oh, it's only and, monsters. All... I don't know why I thought everything. Yeah, no, it's only monsters, so that's why this deck even better plays around it. We just don't commit to the board, um, keep collecting counters until we can just endemian pop everything. Unless we need to commit to the board with, uh... But usually cards that have back row that can do stuff don't have a lot of negates, and cards that have a lot of negates don't have a lot of back row, which means one of the way we can just not commit to the board, or we do commit to the void. Depends on what, uh, deck you're going up against. Different strategies on what deck you're going up against. It also makes the deck a lot more fun to use, considering you have a little, more, a little bit more power over everything. So Deviant summons. Now you choose what you pop too, or no? No, you yeah. had already you had already chosen. No, you don't choose what you pop until after everything resolves. Okay. So even if they summon out a bunch of cards after, a demon can just pop the new cards on the field. Okay. Get another D shifter at hand, by the way. Look at that. That's nice. So doing this. We get the institution. But first, before we do anything there, we want to get as many negates out of the deck as possible before we might banish something important, you know? So instead of using desires to just draw more, we're just going to go and get another Jack King out of the deck. Remember, we're still under D-Shifter, by the way. We should be ending our turn, right? No, we're going to go as far as we can. I was going to do this to try to destroy the monsters here. I'm like, I got negates for you. We're going to say no. Yeah, we move it from Endymion, because we're probably going to use Serv Endymion to bounce Servant to the hand to negate and put the counter back on him. And I want to keep that counter on Citadel for protection. We draw, we draw Jackal and Institution. I'm thinking, actually, this isn't so bad here. So I did this, and use Institution, and look how many counters are on the board, though. You want to move your mouse? Oh, yeah, no, my we mouse won't show. And I need some more room for Reflection here. So I link... Servant away into Artemis, so I can have two zones available. Reflections now can now cheat out her effect using Citadel's effect. By the way, and can't... there's been some comments here where why Artemis, I guess here's an example, just wanted to point that out because we've had a few comments too, is why Artemis, when do you use Artemis? Well, Artemis is there for knowledge, and Artemis is also there for um, um, summoning out Lina, you know? Setting Servant into Artemis to summon Lina, but there's also that She's also there to create room on the board. Could be also be there. So she's really good. Just so you all know that. Mm -hmm. Now his monsters can't be destroyed by card effects. But I'm thinking, oh, I could just bounce him. But then he's got that. I was like, ah, he has a pop. Just don't let it get on the field in the first place. And then he's got, oh. um, yeah. I'm like, okay, well, that doesn't really bother us. We were willing to play around in Nibiru. Like, if he hadn't Nibiru, it was just like how it would work. But this is just worth it because then you can just pop whatever. Now Magna Head can search anything. Like, let's just get out another negate as soon as possible. Oh, but we're still under D Shifter and we're still doing as much as we can here. And I could have linked away more to try to pop um, the Sarnir to go for game, but I thought, eh, let's just wait for the D Shifter to go out, keep our follow up here. All right, y'all. This is with D Shifter, and we're still looking mm -hmm. at three monster effects. One spawn trap. Anything else I'm missing mm -hmm. here? Um, Reflection can search a uh, an Edemia when she's destroyed by battle. And then if they destroy you by Mythical Beasts, by Jackal Kings, they'll go to the extra deck. But Institution, will, both of them will get six counters each. And then they can search anything a lot next turn. And that's two Institution searches, which means they could complete my scales if I wanted to. And even some search Edemian for a board wipe. So it's amazing follow-up as well if they manage to out my board. Also, very ideal board because he's going up against a monster effect heavy deck. Um, mm -hmm. So three monster effects, bone trap, amazing follow-up. Under D-Shifter, mm -hmm. remember that. Yes. There's some hands that can play around. Like, other hands can recycle. But most, a lot of the hands, you can just go and pop everything you need. 
and not worry about D-Shifter. You just try to destroy things, but like, no. And then, here's the thing, I move one counter from each, there's a very specific reason. It's because I want to play around Kurikara. If he uses a spell effect, I'm going to use the Deviant to bounce the Jackal King that just negated. Now he's using that, I remove the counter specifically from Jackal King, put him at zero. Because if he uses Kurikara, I don't want to be, um, um, what do you call it? Losing any counters unnecessarily. And he doesn't have Kurikara. But if he did, I wanted to make sure the, the impact was as little as possible. The draw, I guess. Hey, look at this. One search, look at how many counters you have on the field. We're just gonna go move seven counters again. Wait, huh? Oh, oh Get a no. demon back. <laughs> We're not gonna attack over, we're just gonna pop everything. Wait, for one card? Yeah, we... <laughs> <laughs> one card activation, uh, this you're, is... you're BMing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, Exactly. Sorry, Neil, like, no. We move the counter from Reflection, because if he uses a spell card, we want to bounce the Institution to get another activation off of it. That's four ca jack counters on Jackal King, one Siddler, one on Servant. One card gets us six counters. Another card gets us another six counters. And... That's game. Disgusting. Yeah, the amount of times I've seen Endymion just destroy Vanquish Soul is kind of insanity. Yeah, destroys Vanquish Soul and also the new Snake Eyes as well. So if you want to pick up a deck against the new meta, as long as you don't see Droll, Demons can do a very good job against them. Alrighty, y'all. So the last match of the video, and it looks like Shadow's going second. This is actually the last match that was available in the event as well. Just some lore there. Y'all want to know some lore of the Mighty Master himself. Anyways, going second, the hand looks decent. This looks like a pretty good hand, actually, if I'm not mistaken. It's a lot of separate, like, there's like five different things the hand does. All of my different axes. Um, parts of the uh, the deck, so it, it looks like it's a little like all miscellaneous stuff, but we make it work. All right, so what are we going up against here? All right, is this hmm? Is this just a, a oh mystery? Yeah, is it just a little package or is this? Oh, okay, so we're going it dealing. Is Dragalink? Dragalink, yeah, and Dragalink is actually still pretty good in uh, TCG. Um, they make some pretty good boards still. Fortunately, there's no Max C, so they can't carry them to victory still. Yeah, exactly. Imagine having a board, having an end board with a zillion negates, then get max seed as well. Ah, uh, mm -mm. well, can you imagine that? I'm glad yeah. that hasn't happened that many times before. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so, this looks the like the typical stuff. typical stuff. Do they usually have the same end board in the TCG? They have a similar end board, yeah. Um, so basically, now I'm going against a, you know, a master duel like deck without Electromite now, and surely this deck can't win without Electromite, right? Like. He's got evilly matching that thing as well, if you just saw that. Yeah, he got rid of it, though, so that oh. means he's got something more important. Well, he's not going to be able to use it. You know, he's going first, so it makes sense. Yeah, I guess that's I fair. Get... Mm -hmm. I guess he doesn't know you're going to... I'm assuming you'll pop his whole board. <laughs> well, I mean, you're also assuming he's going to get another turn. This is true, <laughs> yeah. Just an educated guess, you know, I'm thinking he'll pop the board, so... Mm -hmm. No, I like seeing this Pedro because he doesn't really affect me that much. They're... All of um, we'll just remove it. He's about to end. If you want to remove it, uh, Dissipator, you can also just summon it back with Regained. And Dissipator is a monster disruption, and I got a lot of you know spell chopper disruptions. So if you look over here, he's about to go not into Savage Dragon, but into IP Mascarena, which is also kind of a little bit troubling because she could summon out Wait, Unicorn or Goddess. Why no Savage? Oh no, because he thought IP Mascarena was better. Uh, I don't think he has a Lincoln Graveyard. No, he's got plenty of Lincoln Graveyard. I Maybe think he, he just, just wanted he to just thought IP. IP was the better board, probably, is what, the way he felt. So, mm -hmm. Which could be, I mean, you know, if he could spin a card, that hurts you more than negating the card. Mm -hmm. So Exactly. Okay, I'm assuming we're going to see Goddess in this, huh? I mean, maybe. <laughs> Let's take a look. Who, who's going who's gonna to summon Goddess, though, is the question. Wait, huh? All right, so we go Blue Boy. And he gets Dissipato right back on the field. Fortunately, though, we get the sequence here. We go that, that, just setting up boards, and then he uses his Heliotic Spews to bounce Citadel back to the end. Like, okay. The Citadel wants that, to turn? Goes... Citadel's, I mean, kind of, a little bit. But she, uh, softens for turn. Now, he's summoning out Cerberus here. We're gonna search out Servant now. Oh, we just went through two Deceptions. 
I'm gonna summon Atrua's room. I tried to force battle phase, by the way, to get that IP Masquerade off the field, because I knew I could out the void otherwise. It's gonna summon out all these monsters, and then he's gonna take away oh. my monster. Oh, he went goddess. <laughs> he's the one who went goddess, yeah. Okay. So when he said, oh, we're gonna see goddess, I'm like, yeah, we're gonna see goddess. Wait, are you gonna, that, go are you, like, are you gonna goddess him too? Oh, yeah. dang, you don't have left. Oh, by the way, look at look at what, what happened here. We just went through Heliotic Spheres spin, but monster card we control the hand. The Sku count as a Citadel would have been pretty helpful with Institution. We also just went through a Beast pop our Cerberus, which is like, Cerberus is one of the best searches because uh, it gets out Jack King or um, regular Jackal. So that's two pops already. Then we went through Boral and Dragon just negated Cerberus so we could not negate the stuff. Then Underworld Goddess, um, sent Blue Boy away, so that's four removals already. And then Drew's Worm just sent Cerberus away. So basically, we just went through five removals just now. And he still got his uh, Dissipator as well, and his Underworld Goddess Negate, if I use the Graveyard with Selene or anything like that. And he still got some so, wolf. Yeah, he still got some stuff here. All so right. we go Servant here. Now, so it's a fact we're going to make sure that someone out Jackal King, in case he's got, like, more hand oh, disruptions. Oh, luckily you haven't gone... Electromite. Yeah, unfortunately I haven't got Electromite because it's not legal. Oh yeah, I forgot, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so the servant effect can leak away. This is why we use Artemis because Blue Boy's gone. Servant can serve as a, as, as we summon it in other one guys' zone just in case uh, we need the extra monsters one still, it's free. If we draw into Endymion, we were going to use Abductor to search Endymion anyway, but since we drew into the Endymion, we decided we're going to use Reflection to stop to get rid of Underworld Goddess. Because she can't be destroyed, she can't be affected by anything non-targeting. We use Reflection, he could have used Dispater, but we had two monster negates for him. Now we go Jack King here. In Endymion, we're moving, we're moving the counters to pop the board, but Bola and Dragon can't be destroyed. So we don't even bother here. Now we need the. I want to keep the Jackal King on the field just in case he's got. Oh yeah, the Trimers are like my favorite like monsters. Can you guess what we're gonna steal? <gasps> uh -oh. His Dispater. And now his Dispater is gonna get us an extra material, so we can Nasty. link away his monster. Very nice. And, oh, you have uh, an upper game here. here. Hey, exactly. don't tell me you're gonna like... you're gonna you're gonna get him with his own monster. I mean, you have to. You gotta have to. That's the rules of sealing monsters. Oh my, he shouldn't have summoned Dispater. <laughs> nope, Dispater works for me now. Oh, very nice, very nice. Guys, this deck in the TCG is a lot stronger mm -hmm. than you may think. Be open-minded exactly. when it comes to these things. You just... I mean, you know, Shadow's got an advantage. He, he guys, spoiler alert, he is the Mighty Master. A lot of people don't realize Damn. this. A secret yeah. MB. So if you have eight, you know. how many of the six cards on the board, he's going to pop them. Alrighty, y'all. So here is the deck list. We're going to show you two deck lists. The first one is the Endymion deck TCG event, which is the deck that you all saw in the replays. But then we're also going to talk about the actual TCG deck that Shadow uses in real life. Now, the difference is very, very small. Um, but for transparency, I want to show you what was being shown in the actual replays and so um shadow if you want to go ahead and go over this so what we're using here is that we have still the blue swap work engine swap big actually basically just replaced electromite recently even though electromite's been banned for a long time we've only started using crowley as a go-to strategy um only recently it's been very helpful we won the three jackal and three magister because since there's no electromite there's no guarantee to play with the pendulums you want you know so we use the magister jackal combo to be able to go Jackal King, recycle Jackal King, and then end me during the opponent's turn. So that's why we use three Jackal and three Magister. And then three Servant is also there just because she is incredible for summoning anything from the deck for disruption. Same reason you want her in three in Master Duel. We use Abductor at two. She's actually really good um, for comeback victories. Usually I can, if I can search her, if I have Institution and Citadel, and all my counters get blown away. I can remove four counters from Citadel to get Abductor, and then Abductor move the counters to get Endymion, Pendulum Summon and pop the board still, so she's excellent for board breakers, um, for comebacks, I mean. And also, before you go back on Jackal King, Abductor is also one of the cards I side out in my side deck. So Abductor, I usually side out one of her, Cerberus, and one Jackal or one Magister, um, when I'm going second, mostly. Uh, we won the three Jackal Kings and the three Endymions. Obviously, you need them. Um, they're basically your entire end goal. And uh, in the event, we ran Reflection. 
Uh, she's good because, you know, everyone's going to still be winning Zeus, and Magister, and with Reflection in the deck, is a way to, like, guarantee to not lose to Zeus, because you could just summon her out and bounce the extra Z in the battle phase. Uh, Cerberus is there at two there because he's very good for searching Jackal or Jackal King. Also, because you can search Jackal King and Jackal King pop to summon out from extra deck, um, you can get to Crowley without using your normal summon a lot easier. Um, and also, you can keep a Jackal King on the field if you use Servant, summon out Jackal King, and then summon out Cerberus. So you get Servant and Cerberus to go into Crowley, and now you have protection for Crowley as well when you're getting a spellbook card. Now, upstart, first card that's now back up to three, finally. We ended up taking out the Ignite Reload from last game, last list, and one Bestiary. Um, so we can take out as many cards that might break as possible, and it's been even better. So three upstarts is incredible. And now we have the Terraforming. Terraforming is actually legal in TCG, so it's very nice to use it. Servant plus Terraforming basically is almost like everything you need, because that's Servant, Citadel, and then any other Pendulum, you get already counters on Servant, plus Counters and Citadel already. So, yeah, I missed your homing. <laughs> Instafusion is like your ex next card by the grave. If it was legal in Master, in Master Duel, I would 100% be using it because you can summon out Millennium Eyes Restrict before you do any searches at all, and now you got protection from Drill Lockwood that way. So instead of having to get card by the grave, Instafusion is incredible for that. I've also used um, Instafusion as a means to go into Crowley already as, without giving up my normal summon so I can get my Blue Boy draw. And um, Instafusion is actually, I can out a dimensional barrier that way. Because if they debarrier your call Pendulum, oh, you gotta end your turn? Like, no. You Instafusion summon out Restrict, normal summon any monster at all, uh, link them into Dark Charmer. You're gonna be seeing debarrier in Labyrinth all the time. So Dark Charmer take any of their furniture, and the furniture only goes back to the head on trigger effects of anything. So they can't just quick effect add themselves back. So by the time you target the monster, they're not going to be gone. If you summon out to your field, go back into Selene, and now you have a pet, uh, card in Graveyard, because Pedlums always go to the extra deck. Uh, Restrict will be a Graveyard to summon it back with Selene. And then you just go to Axis Go Taco and pop the Lady Labyrinth with any back row, so they can't continuously recycle it. So you actually have outs to debail you with Instafusion that way. The one of Into the Void. Um, to be honest, Into the Void, sometimes I just think about maybe we could just cut that. But if Into the Void goes to three, I'd definitely use it all. You're using it at one, it kind of hurts against Draw Lockwood, but there's less of a chance to draw into it and top deck it when it's at one there. So I still use it. It's excellent for drawing one counter. And um, a lot of the times it's like an extra upstart still. So we use it. But if I get Basilisk, I'll probably replace that Into the Void with Basilisk. So. We got the secret spellbook engine now. Spellbook engine, honestly, if you just, um, if you brick with the deck, like you draw only pendulums, like you draw Servant and Magister with like Jacko King, Abductor, Endymion, you know, or Reflection, and you just brick, you can pendulum some of them all out and then go into Crowley. Crowley guarantees a spell card. Well, yeah, if you have your normal summon, and then you could get two extra draws and two extra counters to trigger your scales and go all off that way. You can still get four and five negates without even using a pendulum summon. Or if you've already used it up, you can still get it after your pendulum summon. And Crowley is just a really good lifesaver. So the Spubic Engine very much helps. Zyres, I use it at two in TCG, but the Master Duel Shuffler always gives you two. So I dropped him down to one in favor of Reflection, but Desires is definitely good at two in the um, TCG, so I use it at two. Next up, we got Mastery. Any hand with Mastery in the hand is a good hand. Even if you draw double copies, basically, you can still do a lot of stuff. Um, usually, if you have any counters and then Mastery, you could theoretically, with any draw spells in your hand, build enough counters on what you have on the field to Demian Pop without even committing to the board. So Mastery is actually excellent for getting enough counters on the board early game if you're going second, but also it's amazing for um, your consistency anyway. Then we got Citadel. Citadel fuels all your counters. Citadel also makes sure that if any of your cards that with counters gets destroyed, they all go on Citadel. And basically, you can get like 20 and 25 counters on Citadel if your proto actually pops your board. And then next turn, you got all those counters for utility. Institution can remove everything and get them back. So Citadel is definitely like one of the best cards. And that's it's just going first. Going second, Citadel is what I want to see because Citadel is what keeps holding counters so I don't have to summon so so someone Jackal. So basically, if I go Servant Magister and I want to make sure that I um, don't give enough, I have enough counters on the board, Citadel keeps like, collecting those counters so that I can Endymion pop 
without having to normal summon anything. And without normal summoning anything, I'm less susceptible to Mirror Jane Banish, Branded Banishment, Imperm to negate my scales, just don't summon to the field yet, and you can't get Imperm on your scales. Citadel is actually excellent for going second, probably the best going second card in this Endymion deck. And Institution is there for the same reason of follow-up. Basically, one of the most consistent things to do with it is any card that can hold a counter, to get you Jackal with Institution, which means that you have your Stardol already, which means any card counters gets you a Jackal King on the field very early. And Institution also is excellent for follow-up because anytime your Mythical Beasts are destroyed, they gets two counters. So basically, Institution is, is makes it so all your Mythical Beasts are giving you follow-up. And if you try to pop Institution, you just remove a counter from it anyway. And then you can use it going second or going third, you know, if your board gets popped, to get any card you need back from your extra deck for follow-up. We got Beastraria dropped it down from 2 to 1 because there were times I've been drawing double copies of it. Beastraria is good that if you can't use the second copy, it acts as a, you know, awaking the dragons kind of thing because you get to summon a demon with two counters for protection. So it's called by the grave that's up next, which is at 1, unfortunately. We need to back up. How else am I going to count and draw? But card by the grave is there. Extra deck, we got Millennium Ice Restrict. Um, Excellent card for playing around Ash, Droll, and uh, we also can play around Valor. They usually can like discard to negate Valor, we just chain and grab it back. And another really good um, byproduct of Millennium Minds Restrict is that if we have Knowledge in the opening hand, um, Knowledge can send away Strict to the graveyard to draw two without us needing to link it away to anything. And then that Strict can be revived with Selene. So Strict can play around Droll, it gives us an extra counter on our Observant with the counter. And uh, we could still link that away into Crowley as well, so Restrict is incredible. I would only think about going into Winda if I've already had a Negate on the field, but even then I still want to go for Restrict because he's a double monster Negate as well already. And I don't trust a Nibiru, so I always keep Jaka King's Negation for it. So if they use a good other card like Ash Blossom, I'd rather use Restrict on the field to negate it. So that's why I use Winda, and the deck is just for... just in case the chance is there. And she's really good, but I'd probably take her out for a Chaos Angel when I get her. Then we got Link Rebo. Link Rebo is there in case Jackal gets negated. If that happens, you can just link away Jackal into Link Rebo and then summon it back with Magister or Jackal King, and then you can continue your stuff there. And from there, you can still link um, Jackal into Artemis if you want to go Lina, or just link them into Dark Charmer to take their graveyard um, if they have anything in graveyard going second. And Link Rebo's been really good for continuing my turns, so I have a way to get rid of my Jackal to summon it back. Anima is there for a similar reason, um, except that usually if my opponent summons a problematic card, like if they summon a Tyria Beast and they summon it in zones 2 or 4, Jackal can theoretically link it to Anima to take that monster. Anima's also good for baiting out like monster negates that I need. Usually I don't need to rely on monster negates, but if they got something like um, that can negate and destroy cards, Anima can be there to take them. Also, Knowledge um, can send Anima away to draw to, so Anima's there, but Anima can be on the traffic block in case you want to replace it with anything else, because it is dependent on what uh, your opponent does. Artemis. Artemis is there because of a uh, spellbook of Knowledge. A lot of the times you can draw Knowledge in your opening hand, and Blue Boy and Secrets would be like in the deck still, and Knowledge would have nothing to do. So you can link Servant, Magister, Jackal, Abductor, any of these cards, or Blue Boy, but like, you don't need to any of these cards into Artemis so that Knowledge can work to draw two cards off of it. So Knowledge won't be a dead card if you have the monsters on the field for it. Also, Artemis can link any of your, your Magister, Jackal, or Servant, or Doctor, any of these cards can be linked into Artemis so that you have a light attribute, and the light attribute could be linked into Lina so you can take your opponent's Zeus and attack directly for game. Crowley is there in case you, um, in case you brick, like I mentioned before. It's just like, excellent for the Spellbook Engine. Um, it's also a dark attribute for Axis Code Talker, since most of the times you don't really actually go into a dark monster, unless you use a dark timer, or oh, a could work, but Crowley has been really good for that. Nipe Mascarena, essentially if you banish all your negates with um, Desires, you can still go into Apollo, and Nipe Mascarena could be done just that, or if you're worried about your opponent using like a Zeus like that, you can actually summon out IP and go into Unicorn whenever your opponent wants to do that. And if you also use IP to summon out Selene, Selene can't be targeted for attacks or destroyed by card effects. So basically Selene becomes like a Ava Max at home, if you will. Lina is excellent. Lina, both Lina and Dark Charmers are basically the, the fastest way to link into Selene if you want to go really fast. Getting an extra body on field using your opponent's monsters is very helpful for going for game, since you can just link, take the monster to go into Selene, so get a monster back, and you have enough attack points for game. We can use Unicorn to spin back anything that can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. Um, one of the things this deck can struggle with is to get around those. Usually we can use Cerberus, but Unicorn is there in case we definitely need to do that. Selene is not exactly like necessary in the deck. 
Um, but she could be really helpful if you're fueling up your counters. She's good at protection, so she actually makes the follow-up even better. Considering if people don't read her and they try to attack her, you just remind them she can't be attacked. They go to main phase two, and then next turn, you just pedal some of everything back to her zones, which has happened several times before. It actually comes up quite often. And uh, she can summon back anything from hand, so she's an extra negate. Essentially, if you bounce a demon back to the hand, or bounce a, bounce a Jackal King to the hand, that already negated, Selene summons it back on the field, and she's basically an extra negate. Or she could revive a Millennium Eyes Restrict in order to negate again. So Selene is just a very good card. We got Avamax, and essentially, Avamax is the, what you're supposed to use in order to attack over monsters that you can't destroy. Like, sometimes your opponent will have a... Like, a rival Attic Nistro monster is unaffected by anything, or just a regular towers. And Avamax is just there saying, if you ever have any issues with battle, you just call on your friend Avamax. And also, Avamax someone with IP Masquerina means that he's basically immune to almost everything, except for Kaijus and all that whatnot. Also, his graveyard effect can shuffle back a card in your protocols into the deck. So not only is he, he's not just under one goddess as an out to a uh, Borland Dragon, but Avamax can also attack if he's destroyed, he can shuffle it back. So his graveyard effect could come in handy a lot of times. Apollo, I don't use her very often at all, but she's there in case um, I banish how many gates with desires. I Masquerina can summon her using up negates I've already used. Like if I've used Endymion's negate by bouncing and Jack King already, she can just summon for even more negates. So Axis Code is there to clean up the job, and your opponent can't respond to anything there. So you basically you're all safe to pop everything you can. And Underwater Goddess is there for a dire emergencies. Usually I use her to get rid of Burl and Dragon, but usually if my opponent has like SP Little Light and you get enough monsters on field, you can actually link away the SP Little Light so that they don't get it back and you can negate everything else. She's just excellent. Any deck that, can, uh, that has free roam in the extra deck like this, should definitely use her at least one copy. She's like the best. Alrighty, y'all. So this is the deck that Shadow uses in his locals with the difference of two cards, which I'm about to show you. This is the exact deck that Shadow uses in his locals. The only difference here is going to be Reflection uh, and then Pot of Desires being at that too. So if you want to run this deck in the TCG, Shadow just dominates everybody just like he does in Master mm -hmm. Duel, obviously. Um, so, <laughs> so guys, this is the deck you want to use in the TCG. Um, the reason we decided to show replays from Master Duel is because there was a TCG event, so it was the perfect opportunity. Like, comment, subscribe, y'all. Love every single one of y'all. I'll catch you on the next one.